the light which calls us to sing of God's steadfast love for us, calls us together in worship. Welcome to today's service for Sunday, June the 28th. I'm recording here at Riverside United Church in Yarker. I want to give you just a, a brief, brief update on our, our process of reopening. As many of you would have heard over the last 24 hours, the Kingston, Frontenac, Lennox, and Addington Public Health Unit uh, placed an order for masks to be worn in all places of worship, indoor places of gathering, stores, convenience stores, any place that you might find yourself basically indoors. Our transition team has met twice, and we're going to meet again this coming week. And we've been doing a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of good work in, in doing a risk assessment, developing some protocols, and these protocols will be then submitted to our regional assembly uh, at least two weeks prior to. And we will be looking to communicate with you, the good folks of East Camden Pastoral Charge, as we move towards our potential opening in September. Our call to worship. Let us gather to worship our God. Let us affirm that we will indeed sing of God's steadfast love and, and proclaim God's faithfulness to all generations. God's steadfast love endures forever. Your faithfulness, O Lord, is as high as the heavens. Happy are those who sing of your praises and who extol your righteousness all day long. Let us pray. Holy God, your faithful love towards us never ends. It is as sure and as dependable as the sky over our heads, and we praise you. We have gathered together in our homes to offer you our worship and our thanksgiving. We've gathered to declare to anyone who will listen that you are our God, and we your people. May your spirit be at work among us as we worship. We ask that you open our eyes to the light of your presence in the places to which we have gathered. For to you alone, faithful creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be all glory and honor now and forever. For as we hear the good news, the good news that God has again blessed us and blessed our lives, blessed it with hope, joy, and steadfast love. Be at peace, dear ones, for God is indeed with us. Amen. I want to take a moment and thank Bill Priestman, who came down here this week with me, and we, we spent some time recording some music that uh, he'd been practicing and I'm going to be sharing those musical pieces over the next coming weeks. This morning's piece for you to enjoy is Morning Has Broken.
Today's suggested scripture readings are from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, Psalm 13, Romans 6, chapter, sorry, chapter 6, verses 12 to 23, the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Today's reading comes from Psalm 89 verses 1 to 4 and 15 to 18. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare, <clears throat> excuse me, I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festival, the festival shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness, for you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted, for your shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Steadfast God, we have heard your word. And we ask that you send your spirit to equip us and inspire us, that your grace-filled hospitality may be the center of our lives. Amen. May these, the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. There are those moments where I say something with the best of intentions. And then, you know, sometimes the way my mind works, I, I speak before I think sometimes, and, and then whatever I might say gets kind of filed away for, for future use or for future planning. Such was the case when months ago, I had said that I, I would like to have a discussion with this, the weekly group discussion, the three C's, the coffee conversation and, and contemplation group. I had, had said that I would like to perhaps have a discussion and maybe a study on the book called The Shack or even the movie The Shack. I think I had even suggested that perhaps we might come together as a community and watch the movie. I immediately, when I was planning to, to perhaps r write about it, I gathered uh, uh, or purchased an electronic version of the book, and I, and I jumped right in to it. And our organist, Charlie from Moscow, even lent me his paper copy. Now, I have an admission to make here. I have seen the movie. I've seen the movie several times. And in fact, good friends of, of ours... Don and Lori Hogan, Don and his company did the stairs here at, at Riverside, took us to the movie, and, well, you know how I like to tear up. Well, I teared up after the movie the first time that I've seen it. But my admission is really more about the fact that I had the best of intentions to finish the book. I got to about three-quarters of the way, but I didn't complete it. And maybe when we are able to gather back in person and, and the, the three C's group can gather and have some discussions and, and perhaps even the Facebook study group, we might find a way of being able to engage with, with some discussion around the book or the movie. There are times when the Spirit moves you and I think again today, much like last Sunday, the Spirit has moved me once again. Last week, while I was on the deck at the manse outside in God's wonderful creation, 
I had given a little bit of background to the book of Psalms and its, its history that, that spans a thousand plus years and the fact that it has multiple authors. I also talked about how the psalmist's poetry expresses an emotion to God or about God. I offered it might even be a, a character study, if you will, of, of God in, in some ways. Now, I'm sure many of us would recall having to do just that in school, a, a character study. Uh, that is a, an offering of, of a study of a character in a book that we might be reading. I believe I also said that God was not simply a character but we might gain some insight into God's nature. And last week, as I considered Psalm 86, I had said that I I found myself in a state of complete awe-ness, if I can use that phrase. I was in awe of the love that, that God has for us. Psalm 86 provides us the the glimpse into the nature of God, reminding us that we know the character of our God. And once again, as I consider Psalm 89, I, I find myself staring face to face with that awesomeness of our God as I consider the two potential suggestions of of psalm readings today, Psalm 13 and Psalm 89. I write today, as I'm, and recording today, as I'm preparing to officiate a a wedding in a few hours. I've got that honor and and privilege to gather with a small number of, of loved ones of the family, of the bride and groom on an outdoor setting. And for this couple, you see, it was, it was rather important to them to have a clergy person officiated. I, th- I think in our discussion, it would be fair for me to say that they saw my presence as a, as a direct invitation to having God there in the ceremony. They shared the significance the importance to them of including the Lord's Prayer, and an acknowledgement of the fact that God had brought them together and that God was there to to bless their marriage. And I see that as, as a reflection. I see it as speaking again to the character of, of God. You see, for me, they sent a a personal invitation to God to be a guest of honor at this celebration of the love that they have for one another. The word invitation brings me back to the shack. Now, I'm not going to give too much away about the book or the movie, so there's no spoiler alerts that are needed here. The book's central character, Mac, receives a a mysterious note signed by Papa, inviting him to come to the shack. Now, Papa is a name that Mac's wife has affectionately used in her reference for God. The whole family uses Papa when they're talking about God. And the shack is this deserted cabin located deep in the wilderness, the shack itself comes with its, its own memories. Mac was a man of, of strong faith. And because of a, of a tragedy in his life connected to that place in the woods, he finds himself angry at God feeling as though God had uh, abandoned him and his family and his young daughter who lost her life. In some ways, though, Mac isn't that different from the psalmist who writes Psalm 89. And even though our reading is focused only on on a small section of the overall psalm, 
And many commentaries strongly encourage preachers to go beyond the verses of 1 to 4 and 15 to 18. For you see, the the entire psalm is actually 52 verses. And a good portion of those verses has the hearer feeling as though God had abandoned the psalmist, David, and the people of Israel. But, but you see, God doesn't abandon the house of David and the people of Israel, nor us as children of God and followers of Christ Jesus. As I said, the, the book of Psalms reflects the emotion of its author and the nature of God. Psalm 89's author and the movie's character Mac expresses their feelings about the seemingly disappearance of God. They both have no issues in expressing expressing their anger to God. Our psalm, Psalm 89, begins with God's steadfast, let me say that again, God's steadfast love endures forever. The concept of steadfast love or loving kindness is present in much of the Hebrew scriptures. And in particular, this part of the psalm that the lectionary has us focusing on. This characteristic of God In the Hebrew language, the word is hesed, H-E-S-E-D. And it's found more than 400 times in the Hebrew scriptures. It is translated in a variety of ways, including mercy, great kindness, faithfulness. But there is a problem The problem is in that these these translations, these these words, do not get to the deep-rooted nature of its meaning. The core idea of this term, hesed, communicates loyalty, devotion, care and concern or faithfulness within a relationship, within a relationship. So thus, Hesed is closely related to God's covenant with God's people. As it relates to the concept of love, Hesed expresses God's faithfulness or loving kindness to God's people. This Hesed, this word that is difficult to translate, is the foundation, the foundation of Psalm 89, and it is what God promises to us when the psalmist uses the phrase, all generations. It includes us. And that's why I can say once again, I am in awe, for this is God's promise to all generations. For me our psalm, and the the many messages I have received by my partial reading of the book, but also in my several viewings of the movie, The Shack, I believe it to remind us, remind me, hopefully you, that we as believers should be living in the belief that there is a constancy of God's love, and therefore we are called to be in relationship with and offer worship to God. Now, I'll offer this, that in your reading, the shack, or in watching the movie, we will have some struggles for sure. Struggles like Mac did with this idea of of God and this loving kindness or hesed, Mac and maybe us 
can't really, you see, we, we, we can't fathom the deepness of God's loving kindness, the deep, the deep commitment of this love is nearly inconceivable for us. Even as Mac, as our psalmist, expresses their disappointment, their anger, their sense of abandonment by God, God stands by the covenant. The promise of God's faithfulness to generations upon generations upon generations of God's people. Now, I realize that the shack will raise many questions, and I accept the fact that it would be a good basis for a discussion in a, in a study group. But one more thing I can offer you is that the author of the book and of our psalm is attempting to describe the indescribable. Scripture tells us that God's thoughts are, are higher than ours. The shack's depiction of God or the Holy Trinity is an interesting portrait that isn't meant to be taken literally as much as it is meant to capture the many of the attributes of God that we read of in the Bible. The interactions we see between Mac and the Holy Trinity shows us the compassionate, the loving kindness nature of God and how God desires a close relationship with each of us. That is why I stand here before you once again with a deep sense of of awe. For God promises to all generations came about for the house of David. For God, you see, brought into the world Jesus Christ, who became the, the true king, who came from the house, the lineage of David. For as much as the author of Psalm 89 feels abandoned by God, God remains steadfast in Jesus' life and ministry, in Jesus' death and resurrection for all of humanity. So that, my friends, that is the kind of love our God has for each and every one of us. And as one review I read of the shack offers, we could say this is true for Psalm 89 and, and the whole Bible. Be careful. This story could possibly change your life. Amen. Wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul.
to the Lamb, I will sing, I will sing to God and to the Lamb, I will sing to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am, while millions join the theme, I will sing. Once again, I, I offer you this plate as a focal point for your prayers, your prayers of thanksgiving, your prayers of, of concern, the prayers I am about to offer. Think of putting your prayers right here. I'm going to, to read, offer a prayer, and offer a moment of silence and, and visualize your prayers being placed in this plate. Let us pray. We gather our prayers for the health and the welfare of all nations. We pray for the strength and the vitality of your church, O oh Lord. We pray for all who suffer from sickness, hardship, or danger. We ask for your steadfast presence, that it be known to those that we hold dear in our hearts, for Dave, Art, Tara, Rebecca, Glenn and Coralyn, Darren, Gloria, Don and Sylvia, Nick, Phil, David, Judy and Ed, Alvin and Judy, Lindsay, John and family. And Lord, we give you thanks for those who continue to work on the front lines. For theirs is the reason why we have the life that we have in this time of COVID. We give you thanks for the, the frontline workers in the healthcare system, for those who continue to drive the highways and byways, ensuring our food chain, and those who work in the grocery stores, convenience stores. We thank you for this community, the community of East Camden Pastoral Charge, Moscow United Church, Riverside United Church, Stone Mills Township, who have all found ways to build a deep, strong sense of community. Thank you. And Lord, we, and Lord, we declare your, your steadfast love for us, and we give you thanks. And we give you thanks by offering the prayer that, that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who creates, redeems, loves you unconditionally and sustains you from everlasting to everlasting, grant you peace, grant you holiness, and grant you eternal life this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.